camera. <coughs> the ball is in here. There are five receivers to the right. The ball is in here. You've already pushed him on field. He's already settled. You've already punched him. Yes, we teach it backwards. He holds it for me. I'm going to learn what 65, 35 is exactly. I'm going to take my outside hand out. I'm going to get it right. Slightly off center, but not much, right? Don't get 50 50. Fly out there on the punch if I can, and I'm going to end up here. 65, 35. You may end up turning a little bit, and that's okay. All right? But not too much. If you overturn, you get right by, right? 65, 35. Get in the fit. Now, here's the difference. See you know how we shimmy? Now here you gotta get your head back and out of the way. Get your head too far forward, like if, if Steve came to start me, he has his head too far forward. If I know how to play as a DB, what I'll do is jack him up where he thinks I'm gonna take him on. What I'll do, I'll pull and jerk him. So you wanna keep your head back, it's like pass pro. So start here, your head back, drop your ass, just like pass pro almost. You really drop your ass. Set! Elbows in tight. Get your head back. Get your head back. Back. Good. Back. Good. Now, when I okay, relax a minute. Now you're gonna form up. I say fit. We're gonna dance with each other. This is the cha cha. This is how to shuffle our feet. He's in close proximity, trying to come off. Stay with my feet. This is bounce. Get both feet down at the same time. He's right by me, trying to get off tight. Bounce the ball. Your feet is in a 65, 35. But I work for you. When I say fit, fit. When I say move, you bounce, two steps over here, bounce back. Bounce to stay at a 65-35. So we're bouncing, not shuffling? You're bouncing. You're bouncing. Just bounce the ball at your feet. Hey, three steps that way, and come back three steps. Stay in a 65-35 when I say sit, freeze it so I can see you. Set. Move. Bounce. Sit. Hold still. Are you still 65-35? Yes, you are. Not too bad. Start from there. Set. Now, hey, you bounce here first, three or four steps, and bounce back. 65, 35, stay in it no matter what. Set. Now, you got to keep your, your face right from now to his neck over here no matter what, right? Right there. Set. Move. Bounce. 65, 35. Head back. Whoa. Good. I'm back. How to glide. You ever seen good linebackers? If Coach Scafidi had the ball, I'm coming downhill, and he's running inside, I'm in close proximity. No, I don't glide, I shuffle. A shuffle us is the bounce. Shuffle, I'm coming downhill on the bounce. It's like I'm blow his ass up, and he's getting too wide. If I shuffle, I'll never get there. How do I cover more ground? The only time my player's allowed to become a heel clicker. Glide. Get out of the shuffle and get into a glide. Click it, you cover more ground. Here's the thrill. Warm up the fit. Now when I say go, through half speed, run three or four steps that way. Run back. If you try to bounce, you can lose them. So if you're not fit, you start taking on the run. Glide to huge steps to stay 65 30. Because a huge step to stay 65 35. Click your heels just fine. Get your feet down quick. Set. Set. Move. Glide. Glide. Pull on back. Hold that stick in you, Justin. Okay. Get, your, get your teeth knocked out. Here we go. In the glide. Set. Now, spread out. You guys down here. Two way go now. You take off one way, any way you want. And then, then you come back. Set. In the glide. Set. Move. Get your head back. Finish the block. Stay on the block. Whoa. We'll go at least eight seconds. We're going to be tenacious on there. If that ever happened again, you can kill it, people, right? If you can stay on a guy eight seconds, you know him. Now, here it is. You're paired up, it's up to you. I want you to get them two different moves. Take off one way in a shuffle, but come back in the glide. Or take off in the glide, come back in a shuffle. I want to see the adjustment on the feet to stay in a 65 35. He glides, I glide. He bounces, I bounce. 65 35. Set! Move! Don't lock out. You have a little slide, man. Whoa, I'm back. Hey, great with the feet. Just keep your head back. Try to sit down on it. Try to, you know how you take the power squat? <laughs> you ever been to those hotels? It's like, are these toilet seats made for giants? You know how you can hardly sit down? And it's there? That's what I want. <laughs> 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 you have a feel on that. 
Okay. Okay. I ain't trying to kill you, but you guys do a good job. Take a break, man. I thought it was saying the order here. Where's my cheat sheet out here? That was fit and shuffle, and that was fixed and slide glue. All right? That was the glide shuffle. You've been through that. Husky's ride by. This is big. Husky's ride by. What you guys want to do now is keep the job over and put your stick down and bring it back to sheet on your grip. This is really good. You can just start here about two yards apart. This is like a rolled up corner on your side. This is like a rolled up corner on yours. What we'll do a lot against two deep people also to dip them around, instead of taking the exorbitant splits to make that corner player come so far right from the force, we'll bring it down tighter splits. Hopefully, he'll still try to get to his force angle and we'll kind of hesitate to come up and blow him down inside. So he's no fool, he's going to go around you. If you take a tight split, like you only split maybe five yards off the tight end, if he's good, he's going to come like he's going to, as you think, he's coming inside you. Hoping to do overbite, and he'll come around you tight, because here comes that half guy in the alley, right? This is ride by from the Husky. Say I came off back up at five yards. There he was. What I want you to do, I don't know anything about these guys. First game of the year, but I see a half guy, deep, and an up guy. Over here on your side, I got a guy up there. Guy back, right? What I want you to do initially is run his inside foot. As soon as he starts to run, here, no, I want you backing up. I want you coming up on his outside. Start back on a one. I should what I want. This is the ride by. This happens a lot. Okay, so I'm up. Pick off his inside foot. There he goes. Throttle right now. Get even. Punch him. Just keep your head in front. Ride him right on by. Either glide or bounce based on how fast he's going. As soon as he takes off your inside foot, he comes right here. Alright? Run, turn, and he goes, punch, your head in front. Just ride. If you got to bounce, if you can bounce and stay on the ride by, do it. If you got to glide on the ride by, do it. Set. Boom. Ride by. Whoa, I'm back. That's a damn good job. Let's go one more time. Don't worry, he's going to get you more tired. Set. Boom! The ride by. Good. Whoa! That's excellent. Good job. Now, the two guys are hard to feel. You put your shield down. You guys are going to watch. You guys are now the receiver. I need two more guys out. I need each coach. I need two more out here in front of me. You've got to hold a stick. You'll turn to page four. We're getting into the pendulum punch again. We really like the stick. Really like the stick. This flight I already got to him. He finally started closing. Ideally, if I ever push the guy, he finally settled. The ball was in here. Well, I'd like to end up about two yards off the 635. The 6535 is not just the punch. It's where my body is in relation to who I gotta stock before I punch him. So do what you gotta do to get the 6535, right? What you're gonna do is get here to 6535. Okay, from there you're gonna walk right out. Walk. Okay, stop. Right there, and now you put in a half a dozen or so, right? All of this is in spot. Since we're going 6535, do you think when I pin the punch? that I would step my outside foot or inside foot to help the integrity of the six by the inside. No, that's my inside. Yes, right. You're right. Here's the key. I'm the receiver on the right. I can finally smell his breath. I almost step on his feet. It's time to pedal and punch. When I can get a 90 degree break in my elbow, my palm on this stick, it's my partner. Just form a 90 degree break, get a 6 by 35, now you're holster. When I say go, take a six inch, you got a hand. This is slow motion, take a six inch punch and pendulum punch, punch under the stick, brace, and duck, get your head up, pass down, punch, elbows are tight, hold it. Set! Coach is picking you tight. Set, punch! Set, don't overstep, just hold it. Drive it down quick. Set, punch! Good, now get your head back. As you pendulum punch now, Really arch your chest. It's what you had the worst case of bad breath. Punch! That's it! 
You don't lock out though. I'll show you why again. Put your hands out straight. The one good thing I can do is a strong safety. You all set on this? Martial arts shit. You don't do that, right? Just give me a bunch. Set. Punch! Good. You guessed it! Line up! Set to punch! As soon as he punches you! Bounce or glide, either way! Change it up! Bounce one way, glide the other, right? Stay on till I call it off. When I say sit, by guys, your helmet better be right there, Judge! And that hat, when we get in after eight seconds, better be right there. You better not be locked out. Set! Go! Move your feet! Get your feet down! Be tenacious! Whoa! Good. Come on back! That's a good job. Now you're into seven. Pendulum punch, shuffle glide. This is what I want. You're gonna punch, that's what you're gonna do. Alright? You're gonna shuffle that way, you're gonna glide back, and then you're gonna go up field. What you're gonna get is bounce, glide, ride by. Yes? Set! It's right next on your outline. Set! Punch! Bounce, glide, ride by. Yeah, whoa! Don't drop your eyes. You're a higher hip guy now, and this could happen. Say I'm really a tall pass receiver, and he's a shorter corner. You gotta really work that, that knee bend, right? <laughs> That's pretty good. You have a feel so far, because I mean, this is so important, I'm going through all this. You know, this is one thing you gotta get, boy. Now, the shimmy and holster progression. All right? Here's how we teach it. Coach, on the drive line? Yeah. Uh, not like you're really like, you know, you're going to punch the guy at the surface. No, you no, know, because then you're going to lie. That's what he's going to throw your arm under arm over. You know, I got a drive by. I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to show you some stuff. No, drive by. Don't, don't try to kill him. This is passing. Because right. if you lunge, he's going to get you to the way. If you don't want to lunge, he'll push and pull. He'll arm over. He'll, uh, he'll do the help. That's why you're playing back here. You say contact with the drive by school. Try to show us you just keep going. Yeah, just try to, and as it really grows, just try to work your head in front. Because if he ever came back, I could easily come back. All right, now, guys, let's stick it back up. This is really important. We'll go one guy at a time so I don't kill him, so you're not existing. Get that line. You got it, coach. What I want you to do is this. The coach, when you teach your receiver coach, you cannot be behind the receiver. He better be behind your mock TV. What you're going to do, what you're going to do, I want you on this outside shoulder, the ball's in here. Three deep, the corner's soft. Um, anywhere he is, here he's on a slide outside for now. Just going about on it, about half speed, when I say go, he's getting those back to me. I want you to look, Justin, look two Man. through and beyond him. Go right at his inside foot, but look two through and beyond him. Okay. You're not even going to come to the shimmy. I want you to really bail out and keep pedaling. As long as he keeps pedaling, keep pushing. Now, if I feel myself get within two yards of him, throt, no, throttle down, but keep running, because he hasn't come up yet. I want to see if your eyes go two through and beyond him. Maybe Whoa, good. That's what you're putting yourself down a little bit. Great eyes he had, I'm telling you. He looked too good behind him. Good. You're the first man behind him? Steve. Look too good behind him now. Set. Move. Look through him. Keep running now. Good. All right. I'm back. Da, 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 da. You fired up, Justin? You guessed it! Hold the stick, me! Get into a pedal. Pedal about five, six yards. Just throttle down. Brace yourself. Now, don't have a stick out here. I'm going to hit him. Get close. What you're going to do is push him. Do you feel him settle? He settles. I settle. Get into the shimmy. Well, you're gaining some ground, but very little. He finally throttles, and I'm about here, but I'm trying to get in here, not go get him a lunch, okay? You see some cut-ups that's happening in gameplay. Then, then you come to him, let him punch 65, 35, and make him bounce his lot. It's a whole inch lot, in other words. Onside, we're talking all onside. Let's start. Set. Move. Oh, get your head across. Inside out. Whoa, good. You see what he did? He initially got his 
his head on the wrong side, but he made himself get back. So that's not too bad. Set! Look two from me on it. Now, this one has to be full speed here, but he goes it's about half speed. Big thing, give him the two yards. I want to see that shimmy as he starts to close with it. Set! Get your head and the nap of that neck. Stay there. Whoa! Good. That's a pretty good job. So what we've done, we've covered it all in terms of that. Now, the get off is everything. Give me a new athlete. Who can I get? I'm the coach I get back. I'm going to stand over there by and put the ball. Okay. Here's the tip move. Roll out. You want the inside foot up, outside foot back, all the way over the front of the water, right? My back foot goes back and roll out on the jaw. Roll out. <laughs> After you go forward, it makes sense to him. That's the back tip of the ball. Your receivers don't even have to hear the snap count in the hub. The, no matter how your center snaps it, your back tip appears to move before the front tip. It moves on gone. Good. That's the rollout. Your problem is if they stand up straight, they, they, they jump start. They don't get going. But they end up here, ball moves, boom, and have a move. That's not so important on run, but it sure as hell is a good tight man. Show it to him again. Red, 50! Red, 50! Good. Roll out. What's the next progression? We would roll out, look two through and beyond the corner, and start screaming. <laughs> Write this down. It's helpful. We condition with a purpose. Oftentimes, instead of team conditioning, we'll have each position coach take his own guys again. You're going to get them in shape. You're going to do things that apply to the game. We're going to come off against our buddy and stalk and we got to stand up 10 or 12 seconds. You try that sometimes. You can work your ass off. But it applies to getting better. Nobody likes to run the I'm not saying you shouldn't, but condition with a purpose. Guys on offense, if you want to condition for a purpose in team, what a great time to work with your hurry up, oh, on air, or your screen game, right? Make him drive it all the way down the field. The legs go far. Tweet ball, dead light up. Hurry, hurry, rip ball. All that light up, go. They're running their ass off. Condition with a purpose. No huddle. Turn the page. There's the whole enchilada. <coughs> now, the under block. Boy, this is big. Here we go. This will be the tight end. Coaches. All right, give me somebody out here with a stick that's a strong safety. Anybody, you got a stick. Get about five and five years, you're damn good. Got a slight break in the knees, not not much. Hands are hanging a little bit. Coach Scafini can just stand out here at the soft corner. You guys can slide back a little bit. You're Coach Who? Well, Rich. Rich, Bill. Here's the under block. I came up to the huddle, right? I told you about the magnet board, right? So I know who he is. He's 33. So I want you to start here. Assuming this ball is in the, in the middle of the field, my split rule tells me to get three or four yards outside the hash, huh? But as I break the huddle and start coming out here, I see number 33 come over. I can already see that corner sitting out there. Cut your split down, right? About eight yards on here, so I come out, get out here. I want you to slide about here, it's just so we'll have enough room. And I'm here, right? I look at him, look at him. And then finally, your eyes come back on the ball, right? You gotta get under. You go at him, you'll never get him, regardless of what the force is. He may be forced outside, or ducking under off tackle, you'll never get him, right? You run under. The ball's height, you run right down the line, walk. I don't think we can get him almost half of one. We're up, we punch 400. Alright. 
So I want you to come down, punch in 100, which means with both hands on both guns, your head's right down the middle. Pendulum punch, head back. Don't bounce on it. Just get there, punch and hold it so I can see it and stay like all up. Yeah, and you then just come at me. Come straight down the line so you can get it four yards in front. Holster, when he comes, kind of a punch inside foot into 100. Hold, set, move. Good, I'm back. Not too bad. Now, come down, pendulum punch. As soon as he punches you, bounce and glide on him. Do what you gotta do with your feet to stay in 100. He bounces, I bounce. He glides, I glide, right? Or you can change up on him, bounce one way, glide back. Set, move. Good. Whoa! You know what? Everything's good. Put your head back. Ass down. Don't block out. Here's the drill. The receiver coach stands behind the receiver here. What I'm going to do, look what I'm going to do. You're both down on the knee. So if you stay there, you're off. I'm up. Take a knee, son. Safety. Get in your stance. You got to learn to do what your eyes say, right? Right as you come off, one of those two is going to stand up. If two stood up, that means I had a number two. Get under, but he didn't come up. I didn't have two. I'm going to do what? Stock one. And what I want you to do, he's going to make sure his eyes look into the eye. You give them two yards, slow down, stay two yards in front of him. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Now, if I point you, that means I say go to stand up. Set. Go! Get up! Get your head back! Whoa! Good. I'm back. Yes? Somebody ask me something? Okay, we go. Set! Good! Good! That's the way to slow down to those. Keep them over, too. Good! Atta boy! Hey, take a look at his. Take a look at my question. Hudson, 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 H
Good. Come on, back. Coach is up here now. You're on the line. Now, you know what would have happened? There, you could have punched 
to goad him back. No, but that's good. Come on back. Now, you guys, the hand jam. He's going to squat all right. Come at my outside. You see him here? Now, keep it coming. Did you see the hands come? As you start to stalk me, and I start to punch you, all right? He's now a jammer. He's going to get there a mile late, right? Get there late. If you can get your hands inside, get him. If you can get your hands inside of him, get him. If he's got you thrown off the inside, just work your way back under. You just walk from here into here, Justin. If you can get him, get him. If he throws you off, go up to number two. Set. Move. Good. Because we'll go one on one with that kind of a creep there and there. Finally, how will we really try to screw him up? Exorbitant split. Because we know he's going to want the fourth Oh my God. Look at that. It's going to take me a whole year to get here. Run. Five or six yards inside. Set. Get 65, 65. Do it. You've got to come screaming because he's coming right now. He's on the corner. I'll keep going back. Can't ever get the first guy's man. If I'm on the line, would you close? Reverse pivot, toss, sweep, you're coming. All right? I'm, I'm the corner. Seven. Here it is. Hey, they ain't going to get there any faster than that, man. That's pretty good. That, that's the way to make it work. How do we guess? Let's say you split wide. Or is taught not to come to the boundary, but split the dip where he would be. Understand? He didn't come all the way out. We would treat him as a, we would treat the one as a two, get under one, get under one. Yeah, yeah. You have to split the talk like the third of the tech. Cross the board. I'm going to split the difference and stay off the other end. I would just, even though there's no one, I would treat one as two. Okay, here's the final thing to dick him. Come on down. Nasty! Nasty. This is a nasty alignment. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Corner's got to come over. <laughs> what you're trying to do is bait him get in the alley, and then you kind of lay around him and drill his ass, but he's good. If he's good, this is what he's going to do to you. He's going to sell you that he's getting to his imaginary spot. He's going to come screaming to get you to come down. Then he's going to come here, he's going to swat your ass and come around because he's going to come around. So if we got a nasty split, I will try to get him around. Yeah. 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 Right? Just come yeah. down about a step. Yeah. Yeah. Work yourself to 65, 35, wherever he goes, punch him. Do that. This is out of a nasty alignment. Set. Move. Good. Good. Got it? Do you have a feel in those basic progressions, man? Let's grab the stuff, take it in, you'll be on a five minute stretch break and we'll continue. Over that, we need to back down a little. This, hey, this came up during the break. It was a good point, it doesn't matter who it was. And I think, I think this is a valid point, but I also think it's an excuse. Where, well, we teach stock, but getting our guys to do it's another thing. Well, we got to learn to plant the seed. Players today are different than they were in the 60s and the 70s. It's not that they're not as good a kid, they're just different. In the old days, they would do just because you're the coach, told them. That's what coach said. I mean, I, there's no questions asked. That's the way kids would it. But kids want today to know they're inquisitive. They want to know why, and they want to know what's in it for them. That doesn't make them worse kids, that's just the way things are now. How do we plant the seed so we'll become the best stock blocking team in America? Because I think there's not a coach in here that you can't get that done. You can be the best stock blocking team in the nation. One, when we go out and individual, first thing we do is what? Stock. We don't throw the ball, we don't run routes, we're not doing squat. We're going to stock our ass off. Every time we can get them for opportunity period, anytime we can get them for conditioning, we're stocking. And the key is you can't sell your guts. You've got Arnold, who's 5'5", five, five, and he runs 5'5 five, five in the 40, but he gives you everything he's got, and he stalks his living ass off, you get him in the game. If he gets going after him, you leave him in there a while. I don't give a shit that guy's 6'2", 
chew tank and run a 4-3 and he won't do it, you're just as well off not having him in there, are you? You're better off playing with 10 guys. Play the guys that do it. And, you know, you got to be a demanding sucker because that's not my topic. But i got a whole three-hour talk on that sucker. It's not what, hey, you're not there to please them. They're there to please you. They just don't know that yet. And you've got to do it in a positive way, but you've got to, that, that's just an excuse. Hey, if they're not stalking, it's because you ain't coaching them. You think you're teaching them but not coaching them. You know what? I'm not jumping you. I'm going to give you an example. This is good. And this kills me. I love the Bruins. You know what? To get those Bruins outside the season to stalk, you have to give them another scholarship. They don't come near guys. And then look at SC's guys. They get after your ass. Take a look sometime at LSU, and I'm going to show you later. They get after your butt because they really work it. Some things that I thought you might have been unclear on that came up, I just want to go back over, and then we'll get to the crack, and we'll look at the cut-ups up. Can you see that? Now, is that the, that's the lights one, right? If I get tight man to man, how can I tell the difference whether he's playing me tight man or he's press bailing? He's going to bail out on me. Eyes. Eyes are on the ball. He's bailing. Eyes are on my belt. He's staying. He's tight man to man. He's parallel. He splits my ass in half. You guys are coaching high school. This is fun. You can sometimes even nail their ass in college. But for you in high school, they already throw the flags before the ball starts. Tell your kid that the flanker, if you get a lot of tight man to man, not just the plays a pass and run. As you come out here to split, back off the ball a little bit. The little high school guy can't help. I gotta get up in his face. Man to man, shit on my side. They've already thrown the flag where they hike the ball because he's in the neutral zone in high school, isn't he? Just <laughs> wrong. Better get tight, man. We give him a little move, the time to fade, right? He's gonna roll into it. 18 yards to bury. My hand and eyes go up and back, not just up. Eyes go up and back, just like we do on the fade. If he's any good, he's trying to get his hands into the basket, right? Slam on the brakes, settle right back down the holster, and he turns around and punches him in a 60 by 35. Hands go up, look, keep running a couple steps, shimmy, slam on the brakes, he goes flying right by, he jump right back inside, 65, 35, both sides wide, there is no cut back safety. I don't know if you've seen much of this. If you coach DB, this is pretty good. But you better get in talk to your receivers in case somebody springs this on you. Take a look at this. Four across the board. Universal coverage. What they'll do, man, they'll take their DBs, the corner safeties, and line them up straight across the field. Depth about 10 yards all of them. You can't tell what the coverage is. That's a pre-snap. You guys have to see. If you didn't see it on TV and you're in the association, if, if you like defense, you ought to probably say, I got the game tape from Air Force and BYU. They ran four across the board except that they got in the nickel. Because Air Force has got the same problem a lot you guys have. They've got no speed in the secondary. And they know that BYU knows how to throw the ball, right? They also know that BYU quarterback knows how to pre-snap, read, and get indicators of what the coverage would be. Any second long, third long? They had four across the board. You know what happened to the quarterback? It's not that he's not good. He doesn't make mistakes. All quarterbacks make. Good quarterbacks solve the coverage problem once they've dropped and set. That's what the good ones do. Who had the fastest seven-step drop in history? You guys know? Joe Namath, for Dorf and Nate. That's why he's so good. Remember Steve Sarkowski? He played for Cal. He played for the Falcons for like 15 years. They said, well, his knees are old. He's never line. He's getting crushed. No, you know what happened? His line was so bad, he would, as he dropped, would try to solve the coverage problem because he had to get the ball out of there quick. Well, you slow down on your drop trying to solve the coverage problem. So exactly have to get the BYU this past fall. He's slowing down his drop because they're four across. He can't, he, there is no pre-snap, and as he drops, he's slowing down. And Air Force kicked their leather ass. I mean, it was unbelievable. Guess what they did in nickel? Five across. Five across the 10, and then jump into 2D, 2D man under Robert and Miller. That's, that's good stuff. Well, if it's running and it happens, what do you think the White House got to do? You got to read on the move. <coughs> now you see why we talk the knee drill. Two popping up, one popping up, because that is universal. I don't know. Play's going over here, yes? I've got a soft corner, so I 
initially started for him. If he bails, or he's in a pedal, we look what? Two, three, and beyond, the same as pass, right? Keep on going, he keeps going, you get two yards, slow down your sprint, keep two yards, he finally closes, we set the punch, 65, 35, we cover that. But how about if I start to come off, and right now he's coming out? What do you think I do? Is that the same as this corner was on Freddie here, which made him a half guy? Is it? What you better do is try to get get back to his outside, get in a wide move, and set back to set the punch, 65, 35, if you know they don't need it forced. If you start to come off and he starts screaming, you better work down the line and set up 65, 35. All those things be covered on the field, you better you got to read it on the move, in other words. Plus, nice to the backside guy if they run this type of high coverage stuff. It doesn't matter. He's soft. He is the cutback safety. Five stripes is inside foot, huh, Steve? Four step, we freeze fake him. Outside, jab step the outside foot, off to go across the field. Right? All those things we already, already covered on the field. So it's, it's no problem on, on the back side. But you got to read it on the move on the front side. This is what I'm talking about. What Air Force do, if they want to sky this guy, he can't stay here all day. That's why our receivers are up. So I'm standing there, blue, 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 and this guy starts moving up and in. He is now what? The number two. Because when you get into universal lock, if they want to get a sky defender up, they got to move him before the snap. He'll never make it. So if you see him before the snap came over, if the play's here, do I stalk one or go after, or do I go under two? You go under two. Four yards in front, right down the line, and we want a hundred block on him. Yes, all of them. And the pendulum touch the head back just like a pass over. Yes, 65, 35, the inside out. On the stock, 100 block on the end. Does it make any sense, man? You better get that taught if you haven't seen it. Somebody might spray it on you. So I just wanted to just kind of go over that and kind of touch on it. I don't know if you see it much, but you might start seeing it more, especially the slower they are, the more they may start thinking about trying to do some of these things. Step in, run. 
Run after number two. Quick shimmy late, punch to the pedal of punch. Do you remember the footwork on the trap? Remember the fullback kick out how we run? Late shimmy punch? That's exactly what we do on the crack. You guys were here for all those sessions. Come down, my aiming point is as near pack. Same punt return, you guys have been exposed to us. Guess what I do right before I can step on his feet or smell his breath? Hey! We yell at him, he looks, we blow him up. Never clip. The idea is we're trying to get the leg shimmy so I can get some balance so I can really uncork on him. This is not passage. This is pretty damn accurate here. It's a fell of punch, but it's a surge. Alright? As they come off, I know what my aiming point is. I want you to write this down. It makes, play, it makes sense to players and you want to drill this. It's a lot easier for your eyes than anything. Your eye fixations, it's a lot easier for your eyes to always go from low to high than it is from high to low. Do you know what It's easier. It's just a natural thing, especially on the run. It's a lot easier for your eyes to go from here up than from here down. If we know he really feels quick, Knowing what you know about good kickoffs and punt return teams, what do they read? Their feet. We read the feet of the number two. As I start now, if his feet start coming up, I gotta redirect to get through his pack. Read his feet. If his feet start coming at me more, I make sure my eyes not come up to get to the uh, field pack. On the move, my eyes go from low to high. And we yell at it. All right. If we want to get an inside backer, well, I've got to know off a game study, you or in the game early, how does this guy play? Is he shitty? Is he a parallel pursuer? If he is, you can crack with a flanker because he's not coming downhill. If he's good and he's a downhill player, you'll never get him. He won't be there. You will never find him. If he shuffles, we can get him with a crack. If he downhills, you have no chance doing it from this alignment. How can the flanker still crack a downhill linebacker with crack motion? Thank you very much. You're going to say that, I think. We heal him. We bring him in. You can do this out of man blocker zone. Reach. When he gets about two steps away from our tight end, the quarterback calls from the camp. Crack the downhill back. All right. Again, I'm not trying to talk you to play so much as, as structures. I've covered the coaching points on the crack block. This is a 50-50 block. Taking half of them away in the upfield pack, it's a hay shot, right? Hey! We got it! Right before we punch them. Cracking the number two defender. Reduce your split if you have to. Same as we did, you know, before it's a strong safety. You need to cut down your split load to get there. We'll go ahead and do that. Sprint, late shimmy, pedal and punch. Stick like glue and finish if he attempts to cross your face. Which means that's the ride by either way we already did on the field, yes? So it all ties in. I covered it, but I want you to see it on your handout. You can take this home and read it. Cracking the linebacker. From video study or game learning, the White House got to know what? If the play side linebacker trying to crack is a downhill defender or a parallel to two. Because the only way we can get him is either A, cut, get down in the nasty to begin with, about five yards, or we've got to get him to come in correct motion to be able to get him. The map determines so we can determine the path to ensure the integrity of the 50 50 blocks we don't play. Crack motion is the solution. Against the downhill backer, I kind of touched on that. All right. Now, the finesse block on a deep safety. If you'll turn to page 12, this is where Air Force makes a limit on people. You guys can do it. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be an option. It can be. It can be, it can be an outside play of any kind. Back before they went to the spread bone and into the wing bone, 
They ran the, the, the wishbone. They run exactly the same place. It does different sets now. What you get is this. If you remember in the old days, what did Air Force do? They came out, they had a split on one side end and a tight end on the other. Then you started watching, they came out with split ends on both sides and the bone. Then they'd run a check with me in the huddle. They're going to run the triple option both if they know which way. They find your strong safety, they run the other way. They know now you have a soft corner with, with no strong safety. Visualize this. You guys have been to the defensive stuff, you know what? Our free safety on option, not today, not tomorrow, and not next year will we ever put the free on the pitch. You are going to get crushed. We're back to our same guy from Argentina. He doesn't know if a football is blown up or stuck. He said, hey, look, they got a play that eventually they're trying to get the ball to this guy. Would you put him on him in 3D? Or him on him? Well, shit, I'd put him in there. I would. Now, how do you do is different. That's not my job. I'm trying to go put the free on. I'm going to show you why. Air Force, saw a corner. I, what? Sprint, explode, look two through and beyond him, just like we in the passing game. Getting the pedal. Push him about 10 yards and now come in for the free. has been taught the poor kid. has been taught what coach told him on the option. He's been taught to mirror the quarterbacks to come down the line. He sees he doesn't give it to the fullback. If you come into the alley, he's got the pitch. He never sees the wideout, man. That guy lights him up. They pushed off your corner. The guy, he went down. He cracks the free. Their arc halfback ends up on your soft corner, and they're out the gate. The band's playing, assuming your backer made any pitch. Your backer didn't make a pitch. That's the quarterback who wanted to die from exhaustion. San Diego State tried this back when D. Dallas played at Air Force. Do you ever see that game? D. Dallas had 286 yard rushing. Out the half! Ended up a 412, broke the all time record. So I'm showing you that's the finesse crack. We push one, finesse the other guy into thinking he's, there's nobody around, and we ear holding the same things we talked before 50 50 block, and it's pretty assertive. And it doesn't have to be an option play. It can be an outside play. But those are just a few of the major points I wanted to cover on that. Here's the playing the seed that came up with Coach. I think this will help. I did. This is on page 13. I want you to, to turn to this. We're going to get those kids to be brainwashed on stock block at any level. Early out. If we have early outs, like if you have special south, sometimes receivers come out early or something too, you guessed it. First thing we're going to do early outs, we're going to jog through run blocking techniques. Just easy a few times, and we're going to work against what we think we're going to see that week in terms of how they play in the secondary. Just go through on jog. This is before a stretch. We'll walk it and then we start jogging. They're not going to pull anything. This is a Bob Go play too. Screw stretch! Take a look at your players in the offseason. They all love to play pick up hoops, right? Five on five in the gym. Do you ever see those guys? They pick teams. Sean's on the skins, I'm on the shirts, okay? Sean's got his team, I got mine here. Do you ever see your players in the offseason before they start playing them out and stretch and ship for 12 minutes? They start playing full speed, full court, fine. They ain't pulling nothing. I'm not saying you shouldn't stretch, but I'm saying if you can get them going jogging early out before stretching, we'll kill them. Individual period. We always block first. Skills and drills. We don't throw the ball, we don't run rounds, we don't do nothing. We're going to stop. Opportunity period. What is that? You guys have an explosives. You haven't done this to it, though, is this bitch. This is built into practice. It's scripted. The last 10 minutes of practice is opportunity period. What is opportunity period? Say you're coaching the White House. They've had a problem on stock on a certain basis. At the end of team offense, 
They go back to their individual area coach. They work on what they've had problems with today. Solve it today. Don't solve it tomorrow. Solve it right now. That's opportunity period at the end of practice. So we got them brain wars there. Game video. Boy, you bring them in the game, a kid does it right. We only bring up the positive on the game video in front of the whole team. Boy, when Sean came down, he stopped the guy, you were all over his ass. We stayed on about eight seconds. We'll play that over and over. But say it's the next play, and you just blow it, and you pull a Dion tackle, and you whip. We won't even bring it up, man. But if Sean does it right, we're bringing up in front of his peers, boy. We want that kid to swell up, you know what I mean? Practice video, boy, if you can get you guys at least there once or so every week or two, just so you can bring them in and talk them through all these things you're talking about. Recognition video, if you haven't ever done this, do it. Eyes are the wide receiver. Kids love this. Once they understand a, a thing, a kid's in your program, you make this tape, you give it to your wide receivers in the offseason. What it is, you take a camera like it's the wide out. Have a guy standing on a handheld camera. Show him the different sides of a half of coverage he can see. A soft corner, number two, corner up, safety back. Have the guy take off, jog with the camera. It's the eyes of the wide receiver. Now he's thinking through who he's got. Do I have one? Do I come under two? They think it's them. They think it's their eyes. You know what I'm saying? You want to come up with creative, fun, neat things. Game practice videos. You want to get some college and NFL stuff and show that to them. Take cups. Guys are really doing it right. Make cups. Guys are doing it wrong. You don't want to show them right, right, right all the time. Thing we talked about earlier. Well, once every couple weeks, you bring the whiteouts. We'll get the other points with whiteouts, huh? How do they stop? Like, you're Mary Mace, we're playing Morse. Well, they're going to look at the got to stop. You're going to no lose, boy. If they do it better, they're going to get your kids' attention. If you do it better, you're basically saying what? What's better than they are? So let's go out and kick their butt and quit screwing around with them. Which is basically what almost happened last year. High school kids are amazing. Like this. It takes them to the fourth period to figure it out. Tie those mothers. You ever seen those guys play from Morse? Boy, do they have folks. You, you, got, you guys got to thank the Lord that they ain't coached. Because if they were, then they would be, I mean, they would just, I mean, they would not lay down. They're so good, you know, they are so good. Steve can be a five technique defensive lineman. Play can be over here. I'll come off and punch my inside foot to turn you. He'll run around the block and beat the play the inside. Pass these guys, you got to They are so shitty. It's unbelievable. Technique fight, but boy, they have talent. If they were ever coached, I wouldn't want to play them. Inside, coach. Inside. Stop! Oh, yeah. They got it all. Kids eat well. <laughs> I want you to take a look at this, and I want you to tell me about problems here. This is the first thing you're going to see is this. This is LSU. You're going to see them individual periods stalking against the corner. Then you see game cuts and they blowing guys up again. So let's take a look at the good, bad number. Then I'll give you a stretch break for about 10 minutes and we'll get everybody back together. And we'll continue. <coughs> Can somebody shut that door? Shut up. I tell you what, light switch is driving that door right to the left. Because otherwise this ain't going to come out. And I need the back door shut also. Is they coming back? No, they're just good. They try to get in, pull out the door, and let them get the door right. <coughs> You guessed it. First thing in the training video is what? It ain't pass routes, it's blocking. I love it. Take a look at this. Comes off nice. All right. Pretty physical corner. Almost put him to his knees. Starting to get the pendulum punch now. Take a look at why he's going to lose him here in a hurry. He's got his hand so compressed, he doesn't have a knife. He doesn't have any elbow right? He's, he's all the way compressed back into himself. He's got to get his huh? you got a pendulum punch and get a little separation here. When you get in trouble is when your head ends up out in front of your butt. You see this? That's when you're going to lose the guy.
pretty good initial punch. I think maybe his feet are a little bit too wide. <laughs> Get your elbows in. See his elbows starting to collapse out? Now, what I like, he really shit off, got his hands back inside, but now he can't help himself. He attacks him. As soon as you lunge, it's over. I'm in. That was pretty good initially. Okay, well, he's, he, he's not bad either. But, now, I don't, I don't know how to tell you exactly. I'm not saying this guy is wrong. But if this was play side, we're trying to get a 65 35 Robert. Here he's born 100, did he? He got a nice punch, but as the guy starts to bounce, I got to get my feet moved. Body in motion stays in motion. See, right when your feet stop is when that guy's going to shrug his toe As soon as he starts to push, you just ride, you just ride him around? Yes, that would be the ride by from the boys and the right. As soon as I got this, the whole key is what? As soon as he starts to throw me here, work my hands to stay in a 65, 35. So I turn my butt inside as he throws me inside. I put my butt on around, right? Keep my hands at 65, 35, and riding right on down the line how we have you got to do that. Does that make sense? And that stops that. That's exactly right, Kevin. That's good. Here's the other 2D corner. He's, he's a quick forcer. I've got to get up. I start to his outside pack to try to just to widen him a little and get to 65, 35 quick. Punch. Here comes the throw by. He's got his head too far in front as he jerks him. It's over. Right there, it's over. You've got to sit down on it, right? Like you're taking a dump. Head back, like pass pro. The pendulum punch here, he's got his hands extended. This guy's going to arm over. It's a pretty good job of staying after him, though. At least you try to stay with it. Get tenacious. Game cuts, this is unbelievable. Watch the receiver at the bottom. LSU against, I can't tell who it is. It's like you in Arkansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, I can't tell. My eyes are so bad. Check him out. Good. Pushing. He settles, I settle, down about two yards. Punch. Now, if you bounce off, and that will happen sometimes because he's coming in space. This ricochet, you got to get your hands back inside. Recoil. Recoil and get your hands back inside. You've lost him, but that was pretty good initially. So let's take a look at the back side. This is the cut back safety. If you think you're going to get this other safety, you're dreaming. Even if it's too deep blood. We want you to run five steps in and cut across and cut him off. This guy's going to end up over in here somewhere. So if we ever did get the break back, we've got the cut back safety cut off, all right? This is on a screen, it's all the same. Take a look at this. Watch the wide out. You want to see a nice crack? Is that not 50-50 on the linebacker? Yes, yes it is. I want you to watch this in a second. This is really good. Watch you remember, 50-50 is not just the punch at any point, how it punched the study. 50-50 is what? I gotta get my body, my hips, and my shoulders at 50-50 before I even punch him, yes? Watch him come down and then work himself back up field as if he sees this back and pursue flat. There's the glide, because I've got to get to 50-50. Boosh. That, that is pretty good. And I'll engage. That's against old guess there. Watch this little wing back. I like this. This is arc, this arc locket, which turns into stock. We've talked to more wing T coaches about this when I go in to talk to them about modifying what they do. A lot of high schools have a little wing back, you know what I mean? Or maybe your team has a little one, but you're not like I will mention stuff. Why are you asking to fly down and ship? Punch you start zone blocking, which we'll talk about later, and arc him on another guy his size. Because the arc eventually turns into stock, right? Stay with it. Just keep working. Not real good technique. Back out. He stays in front of him, didn't he? That's a great job. This is double ugly here. Take a look at either one, because they're going to knock them both down. 
Take a look first at the split air. This is against uh, Texas a and Rock the end of the morrow, man. This guy's getting too crushed. This guy just flat annihilated his guy. I think he thought he was impressed. They don't want, because he started kind of retreating and just attacking. We talked about that earlier. Let's take a look at the slot. I've got whoever comes to me. Don't lunge, though. I mean, see, in college, they're, they're allowed to cut. But they got them both on the ground. That's pretty good. This is transferred from film to video. Let's take a look at the backside of the receiver. If that safety knew how to arc, he, he would have never got it. This is the guy I want. The cutback safety, not that guy. This is a good job of stalking, though. Boosh. LSU against Kentucky. Here's guys kind of going across. They've got the cutback, right? I've got to get under the guy on me. I've got to get under the cutback safety. They end up with two on the, the cutback safety. Is that a hell of a block, man? Huh? You don't have to hurt him. Scream him off. That is tenacity. He engages this guy at about the 17 yard line. Or excuse me, the 12. He's still on him in the end zone. Watch this agent, the top. Pow. Get a little physical when you can. <laughs> That's a pendulum punch if I ever saw one. Don't want one. Play Jimmy. Pow! Drop him. Turn him into a human fossil on the field of lives again. You want to see how many crack? Destroy him. Boy, you gotta love it as a wide receiver. Hey, this is payback time. These guys have been a zone team. I've been running crossing routes all day and dig routes. I've been getting the crap walled off, knocked off, and this is my chance to get even. Football's a mono mono thing. We've talked about that. Hey, you get a little bit of service. There, hey, there's a fun, your armor, son. If we've been in the passing game, you've been getting the crap beat out of you, and I have a chance to unload, and I don't do it. There's a fun, your armor. So here's your chance. You take advantage of it. Watch him get 50-50 on this guy to get fuel back. <laughs> That's really good. Here's the scary one. I think it happens at the top. Probably happens at the bottom. I think it happens at the top. He's going to get two. What they did, they bailed the linebacker out so he cracked him. So he's going to proceed to knock out his and his butt and go after somebody else. Two for one, man. You can win for that. These are the kind of plays you show your kids <laughs> over and over. That is a that's a more broader effort. If you're, you're amazed. That's as good as it gets. If you're the Minnesota Vikings. That's a fighting effort. That's pretty good. In our estimation, good effort, but what do we think he does here? This is the cutoff guy. Does he get him too early or not? I, I think he did. Now, you've got to be aware now, the plays of uh, inside plays can hit the running. I obviously won't be able to come over his far before he'll start to fill. So that would be a drive-by type of situation, huh? It's likely. But this is all part of the, the, the training take. That's the part I was trying to tell you. We have a good feel on stock and crack and under. Cut off. I'm almost on time. So
Just like anything else, if we get it done, we get it done. If we get out early night, I'll, I'll have to be out maybe half an hour early, but I wanted to get it done. Now, this is the plan. Since the time we're done, let's look at this. Coach Vick, now it's broken somehow. I can't get it to go up. I'm talking about the machine. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about the thing. <laughs> it's not sexual. What's going to transpire is uh, I don't know if I ever gave you a break, did I? Or not. Speak to me. It's been over an hour, an hour and a half now. You don't hear me. I like you. You're on the field. Let's just go. What I want to cover now is we're going to bring back in the the other fellows. They
So the first step is death. I put that in his mind. Second step is balance. You're stopping on the second step in the three step drop. So now he's got his balance. The third step is the set. So and I'll go through these, teach them as we go back through it. I just want to identify first what they are. Got to get him head that. <coughs> Basic principles of our five step drop. He teaches open. I'll get into why I use that term. Speed, which is the second step. The third step is the depth step. The fourth, balance. And the fifth step. And, I, and I, again, this is where I want them to learn the progression of what we're doing. In our sprint passage, we have basic sprint. We have an open again. You have a speed step to help them get away. Third step is again depth. Then we've got a crossover step. And then an attack step. This is the term we use. Coaching. These are things you got to be careful 
when you coach these things, how much you coach these things. Um, because you don't want to think about it while you play. This is all kind of like golf. You practice on the practice range, not on the course. And you make sure that you practice on the practice range. Now, let's just get into our three step golf. It'll be easy to teach everything that we do. Um, our three step drop has a rhythm. The rhythm that I tell the quarterbacks is one, two, three. Okay? And as a matter of fact, they will have it on. You see how I have it drawn. That's how I draw it to them. One, two, three together. Again, I never step too far. But that's the only step I'm getting there from that I just pushed away. Now, what happens from here is the two, three, depending upon where I'm starting to uh, throw. But I step, I don't want to step here because I got a tough time to get back here off the plant. I push away. Okay, now on this particular drop, I want to keep my shoulder more parallel. I don't want a big lean to push to get in the way. If I take the ball from the center and I get here, I want to stop that shoulder open, but I want to maintain a position to be almost ready to throw the ball. And on two, they won't go right here with the ball. On the second step, it's the two three. And now I am in position. And the one way I get myself back square is that I will get the ball driven a little bit harder here. And now I'm in a position to throw the football. Okay, I'm in a line to throw the football. But I'm going to throw the ball off the plant and I want to be a line. That's what two and three are. Two is balance. Three is set. And I mean the set. You're set in a line to deliver the ball. So throwing to the right again, one, two, three, and now I'm ready. And two, three is just almost a center pattern. We're not way off the football, but the first step has gathered my depth. And uh, I'm not sure if I've got any teams down on that can drop in and see them we'll get into uh, in a little while. But that is going to the right. The only thing we do different than a lot of people He's throwing to our left on a three-step drop. There's two ways to teach this. The way I teach them is the same step back away. I'm in the same, same position. Now, where I get into is the balance step and the set step. And the balance step is going to be back away from the target line, and the set step is going to be back away. Where I just came from the center area, I'm not offset much. You have to be careful with protection. But I am aligned right now to throw the ball. Right now off the plane. But the ball is, is there. So again, it's here, two, three. And now I'm off that maybe a half yard. Certain people go one and then straight back two or Step back three, and then step here four, which I call a bucket step. A lot of quarterback right foot four Aikman is using right now. It takes more time than what we want. Our passing game, our three step game, is strong on time. I mean, it's on time. It's, it's one six, one seven. And um, where we protect the game, it's. Uh, Out front of your left. Have you ever done that? I don't want, I don't, we don't know we're going to throw the left every time. We have <coughs> things that are going on. He may come here and think he's going to throw right, and by that time, he comes back and has to step this way to get off. And we also go back out, period. So I don't want all of a sudden to be standing off here. But I think it has a chance to get you too old. I want alignment every time. We're taking this football and we're getting it so quick, we have to work hard. It's lip service to say that you're going to just, that that's an easy throw. That's not, this is what a guy's got to be able to do to play quarterback in Tennessee. If he can't execute quick games, if he can't throw that actively and throw it on time, and I mean actively, something on the ball, he can't play quarterback for us. 
and some people struggle with that. And you want to talk about I'm walking through it. And, and I, it's hard for me to get you in here. I need to snap this present. I mean, it's like that and the ball is gone. And we're all set to the football. And it's, it's, a, it's a sudden, it's a one, two, three, ball. And it's quick. You're getting the football and you don't have much grip time on the Yes. I missed your first hour last night. I, whatever I walked in, I heard you say something about the exchange. Um, I noticed you demonstrated there were no false steps. It's just straight back off that left foot. Right. Uh, how do you, how, what do you tell your kids as far as securing that exchange, riding the center, whatever? Are there any other? We don't, we don't follow in with a cheap step or anything else. like that. If the guy's coming off football, we're going to follow the center. We're going to have, to begin with, a little play in our arm. Just we're not going to have a straight locked out arm on the snap. We're going to have a little bit of play and we're just going to follow him. Not very much of a motion anyway. We can follow him with our hands instead of what? Okay. And on pad drop back, you know, the center tail staying down and staying, he's just sitting down. Right there, he's doing a good job of his technique. And the ball, you see, he didn't come away with no problem. You said that pretty close to the line for me. Pretty close. Where is the offensive ball? Can I block it? Let me get into that later. I, I will get into that uh, if we get into it. So you're saying there's one reason for backpedal, the sole reason for that, no backpedal for the balance. You feel that puts him off balance. Too yeah, I think it's too open. But it's like right now, I'm not allowing him to throw our hitch. Right. Well, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it back up. You know, I'm not coming out here. I'm going to back up. That's the worst position to me. I miss right there. I am aligned and I am set. We're pretty broad. We're a lot of people want, you know, all the time here throwing. I hear guys talk about being in your armpits, you know. You see, I'm not big. I don't like a guy taking a big step. To me, that creates a bigger step. I really sit have a guy that can learn to throw with almost no steps. That's just me. My philosophy is going to be demonstrating. That's what you're going to see. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the, the thing of the deep? Yeah. I, I'll do that now. We get through the thing. That's exactly how I feel about it. Uh, it has the back foot, the back foot planted and set. Obviously, the one of the critical is the front foot. I do not tell the guy to point a toe at the target. Then I want to step towards the target. If I'm going ball right here, I'm in a position. I'm stepped towards the target. Okay. Now, I want the toe to be slightly closed to the target. If everything is perfect. But I've had guys that are slightly open. That's how they had the throw. And that to me puts pressure on the elbow. Makes it harder to get over the top guy. That's why I like it here. And now you can just see where my foot's pulling the toe is actually pulling to. But my weight of my foot, my knee is driving away. It's right there. My knee is driving that in. Toes angle here. Now I'm coming in position with my feet. And that's the position we're going to end up in all the time when throwing whatever your position is. So I do tell them to step at the target, or if I've got a guy with a problem, if I do this coaching like you do golf, he'll be a line left, and throw this way. If a guy with a little bit of problem, I get him more open. About six inches open to the target, but he can fall through. People that can't transfer their weight here. You know, so I'm not stepping, I'm stepping right there. That's how I threw it, and that helped me with upper body. You know, a big strong guy throw the ball hard, you got to find a way to throw it hard. Well, I had to close off myself and torque my other body to throw the football hard. Now, I don't know if that makes any sense. Anybody else got anything to add to that? Any thoughts? Because there are million thoughts on this. Again, I'm going to reiterate this. If it's not broken, don't fix it. <coughs> don't mess with kids too much with this. And you'll have a mental case on your mind. You'll never be a quarterback. I can promise you that. Two many other things to think about. Let me just say this and drop it up. What all this is about, and I'm going to get into You coach your quarterback from the neck up to the neck down. And you coach them separate times, just working on the neck down. And there's times you're working on just the neck up. Most of the time, you try to push the drills together where he's having to do something with his eyes and his head, and he's not even getting a chance to think about this part. So that's when it becomes football. So you work on the mechanics of the body, and then you 
to make him forget the body and see if he can maintain the same thing having to make a decision. So every drill we do is done with that in mind. Separate from the neck up and the neck down. I think that's critical to remember when you're teaching you again. So, so on your, uh, your push-off of your left foot, your right hand, you had a kid that came in and delivered and doing the right thing and you had a false step on the other side. I get, I get him out of the cabinet for doing that. Just put your weight inside, inside the seat now. You know, try to get him off. I mean, if you put your weight inside, then you've got more control of the legs and will actually feel the sensation. And they get him up a little bit off the heels on the ground. I don't want the heels off the ground. Some people do different things. I, won't, I don't want these guys to have to do what Bernie Cozart does. A cock step back, you know. That's just giving in to Bernie Cozart. You know, this may be easy for him. They can do that. We're the coach and I will fall step. In our past protection scheme, when we've got guards stepping in there, that's the only way to get your chest on when you leave that foot in there. So you've got to get your foot out and get it away. Another thing to do is if the guy gets too wide, sometimes they have to step back under themselves to get out, air their base a little bit, where it's almost uncomfortable. But I make them have to think that pushing and getting away with some area of base, they'll get out of it. And I just don't, I don't teach a cheap bit. Somebody may tell you a better reason why to teach one than I can tell you why not to, is what I know. You know, my background was option. Well, I know there's no fault steps. So when I learned, I know you can step off either foot. If an offensive lineman weighs 320 pounds, you can step to mm -hmm. left foot, go on the left, and do this and not fall step. I certainly hope the quarterback could do the same. NAS about three steps. Okay, you get into the uh, five step. There was one other thing I mentioned. What is the depth on that three step? Well, our depth, now that on the three step, yeah. it will vary according to that guy's ability to look. Good and inside. But, yeah, because that one is not as critical as protecting a throwing spot. But, but we have to have enough depth. So all I want to do is I want to get a pretty good yard push or so with that first step. And I don't care if it's other feet and throw it from a yard and a half from where they were aligned. You know, from the ball, we're going to get them to be about three and a half. Four and a half, somewhere in that, in that range. Compare it relatively shallow. Take the stand here. about a guy and have to get not getting enough depth because <clears throat> going off the plant is a momentum changer. Makes it a little harder guys a little bit more to control. But with the five step I tend to teach them to open with a little bit more body weight. That does two things. That gets me away. And you see how my shoulders now are dropping. I'm driving. I'm driving back. I'm driving back where my shoulders, my front shoulders higher than my back shoulders. On the three step I don't want that because I want to be able to in position to throw. But on this one, I'm going to say this too, it depends on the tight play. I put the other ones we have to work on. So a lot of things. But I push the weight and I'm driving. I've got some natural body lean. My body lean is back. I'm taking the ball and I'm throwing it back. The second step is speed. All I'm interested in is getting things going. So that step, I want that to happen. One, two, that second step is to be quick. Coming over there. On the third step, after I've hit this position here, the third step, I want them to reach a little bit. Well, reaching does a couple things. Reaching starts bringing me back to a more parallel position. Okay, I've reached. The fourth step is about, that's starting to stop. I'm trying to stop on the fourth step. When the fifth step is hit, and now I've driven the ball in a position to come from the throw. Now I'm ready to throw the football right off the plane. So I don't really have room in here, but one, two, three, four, I'm running out of my rhythm room, five, ball. Now, ball on that. Um, on that, thank God. If you don't 
going to get you death by your third step. You're not going to get there. Um, the thing I like to use with, with football, is I mentioned it before, and how many of you ever played shortstop or second base in baseball? You know, they get the ball in a double play position. You get the ball quick and the ball comes you. You know, you want the ball there. Right there where it's in the throwing position. <clears throat> so we try to really work hard during that drop. For, and get that ball up in the double play position. When I'm five, I can come right now with the football. And I think that's a good term a lot of those kids are baseball players and understand that and teach the shorter stroke. Going to the left, who will do the exact same thing in Tennessee that I teach now on the three step. As I get back on four, it's four, five. Now I'm in a position to come with that double play and take the ball right now. Kind of like catching it off the plane. You have to deliver the ball that we're going back. Boom, that's the rhythm. You know, it just ends up, boom, that's the rhythm. And it's a rhythm, it's a dance. You know, and you kind of just got to feel it. You know, that's the end of the drop. We'll do a little bit of it. I toss in the ball and I just take it. I toss in the ball. I just take it. And that's the end of the drop. Boom. And now I'm throwing it off rhythm and happy. What kind of matter do we go on the line? Flat go or out. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, Some. We have a certain type of vertical that we go on the ball. We have a little stop route inside. We'll have a drop. We got a bird that I'm not sure when you're going to come over. And all of a sudden, I just pat my feet and get to here, and that's we work on that road. Just get on your toes and just get one up. I've got some load of paint on you. Going to take it there. I have to get out there on the field. Start with them and really keep them. All of a sudden, that rhythm, stopping your drop is what I did. Getting on my toe, transferring everything now. And then when they sit on film, kind of passed on them. to the guy for them. That guy learns that rhythm. But outside here, wherever it is, and then the normal drop is like a fed. See, that kind of rhythm. It's not as stop going on the plant. So there's different ways of doing that. Uh, we have to learn our drops by play for that reason. Certain plays, we have a long five, certain plays are short five, certain plays are ready five. That's just in your options, whatever your position, uh, and whatever you're doing, you've got to soak that position to be able to handle it. Now, when we hitch up, we're right back through the middle. And now listen, I'm driving myself back. I'm still trying to stop on four. I hit five. You get the rhythm. And that's the pop up and on that. We we also gather and sit. Now, we have to be real careful. We don't we can't gather and shuffle up and then throw which a lot of people teach. I'm in depth in Tennessee, we throw five step drop from with five and a half to six yards from the ball. That's the shallowest you'll see anybody in America throw the football. It drives some of our quarterbacks initially a little crazy because what that means is I'm about right here in a pocket and I've got people in front of me. But we do a couple of things. Help that number one is we're extremely firm inside. And because we're open ended, use this. What I mean by open ended, we don't have tight ends on the ball. In past situations. You see these running shoot when you get their quarterbacks hit all the time. They're getting on the edges, they're putting these people in balance. I'm looking at what these guys look like. Right there, I'm playing quarterback. I'm going to be real interested in what the coach is talking to me about when I talk about this. I don't know who those guys are. That's what I tell them. I take pictures of some of these guys we're playing against them. I said, I want you to listen to me real closely. And they start complaining about their death. It's real simple mathematics. 
You know how these guys are wide those guys and come off that edge, you know. You say it's pro football. I can't understand these guys. Uh, they don't, must not like those quarterbacks that make $4 million a year. That's all I can tell you. But when you put that throwing spot here, for example, let's go to seven and a half. I see pro teams that put them back there and take those big losing seven step drops. You know, pretending you know, they're scoring all kinds of things, points, aren't they, too, in the NFL? They got all the answers. They put that quarterback, let's go back to nine. Okay, compared to where we are. You just look. Simple mathematics. Where has he got the best chance to stop it? That guy for him. Period of time. Okay? I promise you, we don't get hit off the edge because of that. We may get a blitz to get to us occasionally. But our tackles, if they're smart, and not all of them are, but if they're smart, they learn their sets. We don't, we, we, I see those techniques, you know, I go to those folks, they got these big giants out there that can't even hardly bend it. You know, they're taking all these things, getting all that momentum going, and then here Lawrence Taylor in his prime, you know, he's right back underneath him, you know, just space. Our guys are just sitting there, they're here, right there. Now you've got to come to me. You just can work, 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 work on the ball, on time. These guys have to be firm, okay? They take the other rushers. So now they come in and they got a game on right? All of a sudden we hook up on this game. He passes him off. He ends up freed up. They pass him off. This guy right here is going to go hurt somebody. Coach is not one of our guys. We use what we call a rough technique. Now all of a sudden he's going to go attack a defender. And because we're shallow, we need this for them. We're sitting here. And all of a sudden that rub occurs and all of a sudden it's like Moses. The Red Sea open. And then we work on the clock of movement. And we have a, a lane to throw the football. That's our philosophy. Those that weren't here last night. We played 12 games this year. Our first team gave up six sacks. And when the games were 55 to 3, we gave up <laughs> five with some threes and two. So for the season, Tennessee gave up 11 sacks. Example, another team in our conference is a real good football team. The University of Florida gave up 29. Um, and they're a good football team. And that's a pretty good number compared to most people. But our first team gave up six in the season. And uh, so I just share that with you. Something that I think is awfully important. Coach, yes. with your uh, gather step on your five step drop, mm -hmm. you pop up the lead. Sometimes end up like a good three step drop. No, we don't. We, we're getting, we're having to work on our other athletic and good. It doesn't take much. I mean, I'm already just walking through there. I'm, you know, proud. That, that's the tendency is to be deep. I have to keep them from getting too deep. So we gather, because what I'm saying is that we won't, we won't gather and hitch it up and really step into the throw like some people do. What we have to do is we, we hitch up and sometimes we have to just stay on the ball of our feet, keep our feet moving, and then go. And I'm going to talk about that one before I get into the sprint. Let's just talk about that. Throwing the rhythm. Okay. Every one of our routes don't time out to plant. Every one of our routes don't time out to hit and ball. You've got to do something in the meantime. So what we've got to do is we're in a position in the pocket I'm just going to get on the toes with my feet. And in this situation, I'm a little narrower than I'm in that position to throw. When I'm right, I'm getting ready, I know I'm getting ready to throw. I don't want them here because the side step is going to require pocket movement. And that's the soul awareness. There, 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 there. To throw the football. Rarely do you ever hit the small one when you hit the throw the ball. It's usually that, that, and that's what you have to practice. I'll get into some drills I have to that later on. But I'll just tell you, that's why the people that I love, we go live against our defense in third downs all season long. Do it on uh, Tuesday, we do it on Wednesday. And our head coach is cringing and nervous. He always had but losing one of his lines, somebody's doing this. But you, 
cannot train a quarterback to play unless you get 11 on 11 good. That's the best way to train a quarterback. You can't all out scrimmage all the time. I understand that. But you get better get him time in the passing game with, with rush around him. We did not let him hit our quarterback. Kind of let him tag off. They just run by, and we let the defensive line coach blow a whistle with this sack. And what that does, I don't know that in the offensive line coach, because the defensive line coach is going to be embarrassed on film the next day if he's blowing that whistle and it wasn't going to be a sack. So usually he's more reluctant. He lets the thing go where our quarterback can get into a movement type of thing. But it's kept it from getting people hurt to have a whistle. Uh, I'm not going to let them hit them. And I don't reason I don't let them tag off for the fear that follow through and hitting that hand on the head here. Because I've had one did that and we lost one for a game. Um, so we really make an issue with that. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has any questions. Um, I think we're going to have to go to the next one. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I don't have to hold it as long and I learn what my rhythm is. And we have, like I said, five-step plant, five-step gathering, long five, ready five. And what a ready five is to me, and this and depth step is not going to become a big factor. I'm going one, two, three, and I may have to have to on a third step pattern four and five and deliver the ball because of part of what's happened on a particular read. I've got, I think, pretty good examples of that with me. So that's if I step plant, you get up 80% of your weight in your back foot. Coming at the end, you're talking about? Yeah. When you get to the back foot, I don't know about 80%, I don't, I never figured that out. But on plant, you better be stopping on this step. Right. And you want to eliminate as much as you can. You're going to hit it. Right. I don't know if it's 80% or not, but that time, it's got to be, you've got to have this, and this people can do it and they can't do it. It's all down to turn kind of hitting the golf ball. When you get here, you got to be able to transfer your weight. Some people can and some people can't. Some people can't make that happen rhythmically with their arm. And I don't know how you teach that. I mean, to me, they can do it or they can't. I've never thought of a percentage or anything. You said three step one, six, one, seven, or the old you have to describe seven or five step. Yes, I can do it. plant, two, one, two, 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 three. We're all young. And sometimes it can be, some of them sure to be in a one nine thing. Because he's such a consultant athlete, strong, quick. And the five step ready is your longest or slowest at all? Yeah, five, no, five step ready. I mean, yeah. it might be that he holds a little bit longer, but there's so many times he stops and going off the drop, you know, off the plane, because it may come out. You'll see when I show you some drop that pass off because we don't hold the ball very often. Sometimes we do. I got all the bad and the good. I need to separate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't do the right thing. And he's the a funny dropper. I'm going to tell you. When he's got the result he got, he's a little bit of a hopper. He kind of wanted to get in and kind of hop on four and five. I never started off trying to get him out of it. I could throw a football left hand better than I could ever throw one right hand. Um, I'm pretty smart, I think, realizing you're leaving him alone. Um, he's the best fighter of the been around. By far. Alright, sprint. Anybody else? Anything else on three and five steps? I'm going to get back to some schemes. Mm -hmm. Here the separation stuff that all come out. Um, right hand quarterback. He's on that ball left foot. Right. That's the answer to that. I think it's a pretty neat thing for me, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, I worry too much about the snap and another thing. And I think of another thing, I've seen people turn that into a false lift as a post, but I think it's a good way to get away. It's a good guy and I'm really good at it. That's why I guess I like it. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we just did it whatever way we wanted to do it. We were running wishbone. Sprint. First thing I talked to him about running sprint out is to not step off past the midline. 
guy has a test to come straight out to the same thing. They want to turn away to get, get himself going. The mission's got to stop short of that. So now I'm trying to get off and get on the corner a little quicker. It's a waste of motion. I'm running away from where I'm going when I get too far over. That makes sense for them to say on the feet and go away like that. So don't step past the middle line. The lean is critical to get away. We really, when we're trying to come out of there and get going. The second step is speed. Third step is still gathering depth. Okay, you're naturally going to start swinging that way. So I don't want them to start thinking about going right or left until they're away and getting enough depth. Because the depth we try to end up shooting for on this thing, we'll naturally try to get around six and a half to seven yards coming out on the screen from the ball. So the reason I call the making the crossover, again, this is not completely my cup of tea. You know, get, still get depth. The crossover is going to start really getting going that way. After I hit third, it's four, and then we try to get back attacking on five. My target's back here. I am trying to come back and attack. That's the end of the day. We're not running away any more than that. And then we'll end up oftentimes throwing the ball and certain out to the guy. On time, but now. They chop their steps. Some go after that fit, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, and throwing the ball. That doesn't bother me. It's all different on different places. I don't have to just keep running. And then they're throwing the football. But I basically Sprint, we just control the first time. We try to sometimes throw the ball off the seven. And that's the seventh step, and now we're just stepping and controlling the football. Um, yeah. How wide do you get behind your tackles, and do you, once you get to that point, do you come forward, or do you keep going outside? Well, we're coming down here. We're going to break and try to draw it down. I don't know that I've got any sprint tape with me. Show you exactly what we do. We fit the what helps us. Thank <laughs> you. 